This is the Google Pixel 7a disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. The Pixel 7a can be disassembled from both the back and the front. So depending on what type of repair you need, you'd either take it apart from the rear or the front. For example, if you have to replace the battery, obviously it'll go from the back, so you won't have to actually pry the screen off. And if you only needed a screen replacement, then you can take the phone apart from the front by heating up the screen and prying the screen off, so you wouldn't need to disassemble the rest of the phone. Some heat needs to be applied to the back plate, and then a plastic pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the plastic backplate. The glass camera lens cover can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying it off. 15 T4 or Torx 4 screws need to be removed in addition to a T2 or Torx 2 screw. Now the flex cable for the LED flash needs to be peeled off. The wireless charging coil and NFC antenna are located here. There's a large graphite film on the other side to help transfer heat. There's another T2 or Torx 2 screw which needs to be removed. At this point, the battery cable can be disconnected from the main board. There's a pull tab provided to help you pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the 4385 milliamp hour battery. However, for some reason on the back, it's written as a 4344 milliamp hour battery. So I don't know what's up with that. There's another T5 screw which needs to be removed. Here's a better look at the top earpiece speaker. And there's a red rubber gasket around the opening. Next, heat needs to be applied to the screen to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a plastic pry tool can be used to pry the screen off. Once the screen has been pried off, there's a T4 or Torx 4 screw holding down the cover over the screen connector. On the back of the screen, there's copper film top transfer heat, and we can see the in-display fingerprint sensor, as well as the cutout in the screen for the proximity sensor. There's also graphite film over the mid-frame to help transfer heat. Now that the screen has been disconnected from the main board, we can lift up and remove the main board itself. Looking at the main board, there's copper tape on the shields to help transfer heat, and a rubber gasket around the charger port. There's also a Luka damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker over there. The primary microphone is located on the bottom next to the charger port. 
As for the cameras, there's a 64 megapixel primary camera and a 13 megapixel ultra wide. The primary camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. Once the shield is removed, we can see thermal pads on these chips. Looking at the other side, we can see the 13 megapixel front facing camera, as well as the connectors for the cameras which can be disconnected by just popping them off. We also have a better look at the proximity sensor, and we can see thermal pads to help transfer heat in addition to a copper heat plate and copper tape on the shields. The SIM reader is located here, and the charger port is soldered to the main board. Here's a better look at the copper heat plate. Once the shield is removed, we can see more thermal compound on top of the RAM and processor, as well as this chip, to help transfer heat. Looking at the bottom speaker assembly, we can see that it has the little white foam balls, which make the speaker sound larger than it actually is and there's a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the opening. This flex cable over here connects the LED flash, the secondary microphone, as well as the power button and volume keys to the main board. If you need to replace the power button or volume keys, there are two T4 screws holding down this metal plate, which needs to be removed, so you can lift up and remove the flex cable and the buttons. And finally, the vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner, and it's held down with some adhesive. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 7.5 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once everything's back in place, power on the phone, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.